Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, it is so good to have you here, and I think for, for many of my viewers, I have to situate you and who you are, because it's a little bit crazy. You are a four-time Formula One world champion. Uh, Formula One is one of the biggest sports in the world. You're a race car driver, but oftentimes when I have to explain it to people, they go like, Formula One, they go like, what is that? What is it? Yeah. yeah, and I go like, it's NASCAR, but they turn the other way. <laughs> and, like, is, is it strange for you? Is it a bit surreal being in a position where you are in a sport that genuinely is hundreds of millions of people watch this around the world? But in America, there's many people who have no clue what you do. Uh, I wouldn't say it's strange. I think, you know, here the people grow up and the drivers grow up to do NASCAR or IndyCar. Right. So um, just like it's in the NFL, for example, here you have, that's ours is soccer right. in England. So, um, and then we only have one race here and we've not had a race here for, for many, many years. Um, there was a gap we had, I think, up until 2007. It was Indianapolis and then not till 2012. So, it, but it's growing here. But yeah, I'm educating. Every time I meet someone, I'm telling them something new. And particularly um, when I talk about like the weight that I lose, they're like, "Wow, how much I'm, weight do you lose?" Because people like, don't know. Well, the, the most I've ever lost in the race is ten and a half pounds in an hour and forty-five minutes, and that was like Malaysia and Singapore. Right. And so every, every time I tell that to an American, they're like, "Wow, I need to be a racing driver." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think one of the reasons F1 is growing in America is because of your presence. You. You're not a regular racing driver that's only on the track. You're out and about. Um, people love your story. So what, what I think a lot of people have been um, really attracted to when it comes to your story is the journey that you are on. So, I mean, you grew up in a sport that is really reserved for very rich people, yeah. right? But you did not grow up rich at all, no. and your dad made your career possible. Like, how did that all begin? How hard was that journey getting into F1? Uh, it, was, it was incredible. I mean, I, I grew up on my dad's uh, couch, and in a normal council estate. Uh, and it was a weekend hobby for me and my dad. We kind of stumbled across it. We started racing RC cars when I was four. Right. And he thought I had really good hand-to-eye coordination, so he bought me a go-kart. It was really old from a newspaper. And we arrived at the, at the track for the first time. We were not welcome. We were the only, first, the only black people there. Right. And, um, you know, and it was very, very expensive. So my dad had four jobs just to keep us going. He was. Uh, going to London, doing his normal uh, job, which was IT at a railroad, railroad station. And then he would come home, he'd be putting up for sales signs, vending machines, anything he could find, a little bit of cash to, because it's so expensive. Right. Uh, but I was lucky I got signed when I was 13, so that's really... But the goal and my dream started when I was five, was to be like Ayrton Senna, which you know right, very right. much about. And, um, and kind of, we never lost sight of that. But my dad, what my dad didn't want, to, want us to do is to struggle as he did. He's from Grenada came to London and, you know, struggled, really, um, finding money, finding a good job. And he also, my brother's disabled, so he's like, I don't want my, my kids to struggle like I have. So he worked to the bone to create an opportunity for us. Right, the two of you were a team. I mean, you've got your dad teaching you how to race cars. You get signed at 13, and that's really the beginning of the journey because many people have said in the world that F1 is the pinnacle of driving. I mean, these are the fastest cars in the world. You know, this is zero to 60, and what is it now? Is it a second now? What, what are you no, at now? What is still, it, two? What is that? It's still like two. Oh, still two. two of course, I'm sorry. Still two <laughs> seconds. Zero to 60 in two seconds. <laughs> you, you, you have this machine that you are controlling, and you are driving against the fastest drivers in the world. You went from nothing to being a four-time world champion. Every single day is a challenge for you, and now you're going to be racing in Austin in America, and you could win your fifth world championship which, which is record-breaking on so many levels. Do you sometimes take a moment to pause and go, like, this is, this is surreal? Oh, every day. I'm, you know, I get to travel the world. I get to see and meet so many different pe people. And um, racing the Formula 1 car is just the greatest thing, man. Uh, I remember from the first day that I got to drive a Formula 1 car in two, it was 2006. Um, and when I entered Formula 1 when I was 22, I'm 33 now. And my goal was always to emulate this, this older, you know, legendary driver who was a Brazilian who died in the sport, because it is a dangerous sport. And he was three-time world champion, as you know. Right. And so two years ago, I, I equaled him, um, which was kind of just an incredible moment for, for me. And then since then, I've kind of been trying to carry on the baton from him, because, as I said, he was the guy I always wanted to be. Right. And you, you, you're still the only black F1 driver. And it's always surreal and interesting, because, like, when the camera goes, you know, down the paddock, they'll show, like, all the drivers, all the drivers. 
and just generally, I mean, like, F1 in many ways is sort of like equestrian sports. You can see what a person looks like when they're in it. You're like, yeah, 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 you, <laughs> you, do, you ride the horses, you ride the horses, you ride... Like, everyone's got that look. And then it gets to you, and it's like, uh, I'm sorry, sir, how did you get in here? <laughs> like, and a lot of people complained about that initially. They were like, is he bringing hip-hop to the sport? No. <laughs> is he bringing... Is he gonna put, like, a sound system on his car? Is that what's happening That's here? exactly how But, it like, is. You've, you've shown that you can still be yourself and be a professional racing driver at the same time. Has that been an important journey for you? It really has, and it's been really difficult to break that mold. You know, they, they, uh, there was this saying that you have to, this is what a racing driver does, this is how they look, and this is how they talk. And right. To break that mold has taken a long time. I've been, as a, I've been here now, it's my 11th season. Um, but I think in today's world, you have to transcend, you have to do something different, you have to, uh, show your uniqueness right. and, um, and not shy away from that. And that's really something that I've really worked hard on. Um, and now it's accepted when I do all this traveling, which is a lot more than any other racer ever does. Right. And then they're like, oh, he's going to be distracted. And I turn up and I win. And then they're, they're oh, well, that was good for them. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, w one of the things that's, that's really fascinating is that difference that you bring, right? The way you dress has been one of the key things. You, you're always in the magazines for, for your fashion sense. And now you've taken that to the next level. You've teamed up with Tommy Hilfiger. Right, and I think it's the, the the thing is Tommy X Lewis, which I say is Tommy, Tommy by Lewis, Lewis yeah. but this is Tommy X Lewis, and I feel like we need to get this sorted out because like <laughs> iPhone says it's not X, it's ten, and then you guys say it's not by, it's X, and then yeah. like like we got to agree on what this <laughs> is, but the fashion itself is being really well received. You had a show in China, yep. which was phenomenal. Like you had everyone from Gigi Hadid there. You 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 have the world now looking to your clothing, and they're going like you're a fashion designer. How do you go from racing cars to designing clothes? Like, they don't... Because, like, racing drivers are very, like, very, like, yes, we turn, then we drive, then we go straight, then we come and back. <laughs> That's a racing driver. And then True. you're like, yeah, like, the shapes and everything? Like, <laughs> where did that come from? Honestly, it's been an incredible experience. I met Tommy here in New York, um, like, five years ago. And every time I saw him, he was like, I love how you're dressing. We should do something together. And I, and I, I was like, no way, Tommy wants to do something with me. I, I didn't truly believe what he was saying, but... I've had the same thing. I, I had H and M say, like, yo, you dress really well. <laughs> so, I mean, we're both, we're both in the same boat. But, yeah, yeah, carry on. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. So, yeah, so Tommy Hilfiger says he likes how you dress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, obviously, the, the, the partnership came up, and I was able to bring them to the team, so another team sponsor, and, uh, and the opportunity to design uh, my own clothing collection. So, uh, I really took it on as a an internship, really, because I get to learn from a, an icon like Tommy. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a lot of homework. I had been going to a lot of fashion shows as well. Fashion is just something I've always been into. And also just discovering the looks that I like and discovering how I want to feel, how I want to dress and express myself. Right. So, um, and it's going really well. It's sold out in, when I was in Tokyo, it sold out there. I think in the States for the first uh, couple or well, few weeks it came out, it was a large, like 77% of sales, men's sales was my collection, so it's That's amazing. Good. Yeah. You also have uh, really been advocating for, and you, you implemented it in having models who are diverse. You, like, when I saw the runway show, it was everyone who looked like everyone. It was, yeah. it was really beautiful and different to see on a runway, and that wasn't a mistake. No, absolutely. So I, I like to get involved in everything, and I micromanage everything. So, um, so I you know what music we're going to play. So I did the music, the playlist for the show. Right. When we had, the, it is meant the men's show, so um, it was just going to be men. And I was like, I really want it to be mixed. I do want women to walk and dress in these clothes, because, you know, today's world, women do wear men's clothes. Right. And I think diversity and, and, and inclusivity is, every, is such an important thing, message to get across today. And so that's what I wanted to do with my clothing. It's fantastic, man. Congratulations on everything uh, you're doing. <laughs> Excited for the race. The Formula One US Grand Prix in Austin will take place on October 21st. And the Tommy X Lewis collection is available now. Lewis Hamilton, everybody.